Stuart, we're very much looking ahead to the start of the new season and the brilliant challenges to come on the park for Rangers. How, firstly, would you assess the success of last season and the position that that's now put the club in? Last season was fantastic. We to go through the, the league season unbeaten. Uh, something that nobody would have imagined at the start of the season. Uh, the European run in the Europa League, again, there were some fantastic victories there. And I think the manner in which the boys were playing football last year was, was terrific to watch. Uh, the only shame was there weren't any fans in to see it, but we're seeing the fans coming back now, which is great. And I think you can see the boys reacting to that in a very positive manner on the pitch in the couple of games we've had, or three games we've had now, uh, against Arsenal, Brighton and Real Madrid. So there's, there's a lot to look forward to. Uh, I think we've added to the squad. I think we've strengthened the squad. You can see that uh, from the, the games we've played already. I think the style of football is going to be very similar from, again, from what we saw at the weekend there in the two matches against Brighton and Real Madrid. Uh, there's a very free-flowing, fast form of football and lots to, lots to look forward to uh, in the current season. So 55's gone. You know, we've done that. It's in the cabinet behind us. And it's now on to, to, to the current season and trying to retain the league and trying to qualify for the Champions League group stages. John Bennett spoke at the AGM last year about the, the growth phase for Rangers following the recovery phase. How well placed are the club now to enter that growth phase? We've got fantastic foundations in place now. I think it's been well documented, the issues that we had to deal with. Uh, I've been here six years and every year has got slightly easier in terms of what we're dealing with. I've been able to look forward and to being able to look at how we take the club forward is a key thing. You know, be it the digital transformation strategy we're looking at, we want to get a single sign on. So supporters, we understand the frustration supporters have. One of our big focuses for the current year is customer service and making sure we can try and improve the fans' touch points with the club. You know, we try and make it as painless as possible. And we try and do that. I know that you know sometimes things happen and we have mishaps and but we are looking and we've invested a lot in that strategy so far but there's a lot more to come so you've seen the new website last year you've seen the new app there's been a lot of investment in rangers tv uh my Gers, for example but we need to bring all that information into one place so that is an example of how we'll improve the fan experience of dealing with the club but there's there's loads of other areas you know commercially we're making a lot of progress infrastructure wise we're making a lot of progress uh delighted that when the fans who've already been back and those still to come back We'll see a lot of improvement. We've got the new hybrid pitch this year, which has come through two games in two days there, and actually you'd hardly know there'd been a game on the pitch. So, groundsman's delighted with that, but, you know, and, and quite often groundsman would almost say rather than play football on the pitch. It's uh, the classic groundsman trait. But the guys have been brilliant. You know, they've put a lot of work in over the summer in a very short period of time to get the pitch into the condition it's in. So we're we're delighted with that shaping up. But it's still got more development to come. Uh, you'll see a lot of general tidying up around the, the ground in the stadium. We've got a new AstroTurf pitch in up at the training ground as well, and that's that's been long overdue, to be honest. But that will assist with the academy in particular in terms of the development work of, of, of the boys there. So we feel a really strong foundations. We need to keep moving forward. We can't stand still, you know, and we can't get complacent in anything that we do. So we we're, we're, we're feel we're in a really good place now. We've got the added lift of having won the league. So everybody's coming to work with a smile on their face. And Rangers is all about standards. It's all about being the best you can be. And and we're pushing those all the time, but not just stopping because we think we've got there. Because life's moving at such a pace these days that we need to keep on top of that as well. So really excited about what's coming up for the current season. I think the key message really from, I guess, the last six years, six and a half years has really been that the fans are the lifeblood of the football club and it's been brilliant to see them come back into the stadium over the last couple of weeks now. It's been great to, to have those numbers and what sort of challenges have, have you guys and everyone associated with the club been posed to, to get those numbers? I think first it is the fact that the fans are back and as you, you mentioned earlier, you know, John Bennett has said the fans are the lifeblood of the, of the club and, and this club wouldn't be where it is without the fans. Not just the last 10 years, but you know, the 140 years before that as well. So, we're delighted of the fans back in. We've obviously had to adapt what we do to make sure that we're doing it in a safe manner. You know, the, the virus is still here, it's still with us. So, we need to make sure that we respect that in terms of the way that we operate the stadium. So, for example, there's been no kiosks or concessions open for the, the friendlies. We await the announcement next week to see if we can get back to full capacity, as we've previously been told. 
and that would be the Malmo game on the 10th of, 10th of August if we can do that. So hopefully, hopefully, we'll, we'll be in a position to have a full stadium and that's going to be something, you know, that you could see it lifting the roofs off that night. Uh, touch would even get a result as well, it'll be there. But so many of our players haven't played in front of a full stadium. So that is going to be a, a fantastic moment when, when we can actually achieve that. But as you would imagine, we've had to adapt and, and be flexible and be pragmatic. And I'd like to thank the fans for the way that they've dealt with the, some of the changes we've had to implement over, over the last three games, where they, they maybe have had to still wear their masks. They've not been able to, you know, linger on concourses, not be able to bring food and water into the games. And so not be able to buy food and water, but we're looking to accommodate and we'd like to thank the, the council and, and the police as well for actually being a bit more flexible and allowing people to come in. Because you see the temperatures we've had last weekend, you know, if people weren't able to have a bottle of water, for example, that, that's just not right. So there's been coming and going from everybody in terms of getting the matches on. Away from the first team, it's been absolutely terrific to see a Rangers B team in the Lowland League. How have the board and the executive team supported this venture? They've been 100% behind us. The, the, the board in particular got behind the B team. The concept of B teams is, is one that's very widely used through other European leagues. It's been well documented how Rangers led the charge in trying to get the B teams into the League Two in the SPFL. Uh, we did a extensive consultation with almost all of the clubs in the SPFL last summer. We did that off our own back. That was us trying to you know, lead and trying to demonstrate we need, how we need to take things forward. We, feel, we felt then and we still feel now that there's a real gap in the pathway for the boys from 18 to 21. The SPFL talked about having a reserve league this year. The clubs didn't want that. So we are now one of, if not the only, but certainly one of the very few leagues in Europe which doesn't have a pathway for its players between the ages of 18 and 21. So we, as the situation evolved with the, the B teams going into the SPFL, it became apparent that we were unlikely to get that through. We were approached by the Lowland League and asked if we'd like to put our B team into the Lowland League and we jumped at the chance to do that because it gives our boys regular challenges against men and that's what we've said is one of the things we need. They need to be challenged. They need to be playing in front of fans. They need to be playing in a regular programme of games and playing in stadiums and dealing with adversity. And we're absolutely delighted at the way we've been welcomed by the Lowland League clubs. Hopefully we are showing them the respect that they deserve because we've been invited to play in their league. And that means a lot to us, uh, you know, as a club. And it's not about Rangers being a big club and we're playing against small clubs. We're, we're playing against equals as far as we've taken it and we're dealing with it on that basis. The games so far have all been sold out, which is great as well. We always believed as part of our proposal that having Rangers B teams at the lower leagues or in the lower league would add finances to those clubs and we've proven that over the first three games. So absolutely delighted with the manner in which that uh, development is working so far. And I'm sure there'll be some ups and downs as we go through it, but we still believe wholeheartedly that B teams in the SPFL is the way forward. We are, despite the SPFL talking about reserve leagues, not come up with an alternative so far. You know, again, you're looking for the authorities to actually lead in terms of these aspects of the game, but it's been down to the clubs and we're not getting that leadership from the game. Where's the alternative? Where's the plan B or the plan C in terms of what we're going to do for the development of our boys between 18 to 21? And Ross, you'd, you'll, you'll have heard Ross a uh, short while ago speak about his views on that as well. So we're, we're really keen that we keep pressing on that and we will keep pressing, but delighted that the Lowland League have given us the opportunity that we have. You actually mentioned the, the SPFL there. Now, of course, you're now being elected back onto the board of the, the SPFL. What sort of areas are you looking to influence there over the next year? I think there's several areas where the SPFL could be doing more and could be better. Uh, look at the commercial aspects of, of the organisation. I think when you look at the television deal we've currently got in place with Sky, and Sky are fantastic partners, so no criticism of Sky whatsoever, but I think we've undersold the product. We need to be marketing Scottish football in a much better way than we do. You know, look at the product we've got at the moment. Look at where our coefficient is in Europe. You know, we're playing quality teams. I mean, we've seen it ourselves in the last couple of years. But when you look at the value of a I know, take the old firm games for example, there's four of them per season. We know that Sky are paying £7.5 million per game 
for the Premiership package. The Old Firm games rate at the same level as some of the top Premiership games. You know, the Old Firm's recognised as being one of the world's top derbies. So if you take the Old Firm game, four Old Firm games alone, that's equivalent to £30 million of value based on the Premiership payment terms. But the SPFL as a league is only getting £25 million for 48 games. Therefore, how have we sold that? How can we say that we've sold that well? So, in my mind, that's been undersold, and that's a key area where I believe the SPFL executive need to be looking to do better going forward. I think the governance, I've, I've talked about that you know, since last year. I, I believe there's, there's loads of areas where the governance of the league can be much stronger. And hopefully, by doing it in a positive, proactive way, we can actually make it better. Because uh, it affects all the clubs in Scotland, which ultimately reflects on us. So, I... As I say, I look at the commercial, the way we commercialise the game and, and the way that uh, I believe we undersell Scottish football. I actually believe we've got quite a good product here. Uh, you know, there's, I know there are a lot of clubs at the moment who are looking at how could we be doing things better. And th 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 there's some grumbles there. But we need those clubs to actually come forward. And let's have the, op the open, honest debate about how we improve our game. And actually, how the authorities actually lead the game. You know, it's it's just incredible. As a league, we don't have a strategy. You know, so that's an area I've been looking for. Look, where's the strategy for the league? How are we going to take this forward? How are we going to make it better? The Rangers women's team are back in action this week as well with a friendly against Hamilton ahead of their competitive action starting next weekend. Now, well, I'm sure everyone would have thought for a, a higher league position from them last year. How fantastic to have them as an integral part of the football set up at the, the training ground now. Well, we talk about having a... Rangers are a modern, innovative, pioneering football club and winning football club, importantly. And you can't be those things if you don't have a diverse group of teams. So the board made a decision a couple of years ago that the women's team should become professional. And I know they were all disappointed in where they finished last year, but I also know that they're approaching the new season with enthusiasm and excitement and really looking forward to driving on and winning the league next year. That's the target, they absolutely set for themselves. So we're, we're excited by that. I, I know that their pre-season has gone well. Uh, uh, friendly against Hamilton, the key stage in that. But I know Amy and the team and uh, Malky are really looking forward to this season. So it's, it's a big part of the club. It's going to become bigger as well because there's no doubt that the investment that's coming into the women's game through UEFA and FIFA is going to lead to the development of that. And that will lead to hopefully you've got better run competitions. You, you've got more sponsorship, more uh, partners coming into the game as well. So that's something we're really excited about as part of the club. You touched on it a little earlier, but commercially the clubs obviously continue to go from strength to strength. How do you reflect on the growth in this, this area and what more is there to come from that area too? The commercial department has grown every year. It's been, we started from a really low base six years ago. There's, there's no getting away from that because of where the club was. But it's, it's evolved and it's about getting good people in place. So we brought James Bisgrove in a couple of years ago as commercial marketing director. But it's not just James, and he would be the first to say that. It's about the team he's got around them. We always knew the structure we wanted, but it's then getting good people to populate that structure. So we're, we're again, looking forward next year. There's some really exciting developments going forward. My Jersey is moving into year two, and that's going strongly, and it's growing, which is, which is fantastic to see. Uh, we talked about the digital transformation strategy. We, we, need to, we need to improve the fan experience. We, we need to make it easier for fans to deal with Rangers. We need to make it, we need to be easy to deal with. That, that, that's first and foremost, that's where we have to be. So that, that side of the business, there's a lot of investment going into that side of the business. It may take us a bit of time to get to where we want to get to, but we can see the improvements there. The commercial partnerships that we are uh, developing, we've gone from 10 to about just under 40, I think it is now. And we've got a very clear strategy in how we're selling the partnerships out to the, the wider market. And that's been a key source of revenue for us. It's about being innovative. It's about being leading edge. But there's a couple of projects we're really excited about we've got ongoing at the moment. Uh, we've got New Edmondson House, you know, the 150th anniversary, and that's a massive year for us uh, in terms of commercial, uh, the commercial side of things. But it's also about leaving a legacy. And New Edmondson House will be that legacy. And, but again, we want to involve as many people as we can in the celebrations of the 150th anniversary. It goes back to the fans being the lifeblood of the club. 
we wouldn't have reached 150 years if it hadn't been for the support of the club. So we're all really excited about New Edmiston House and, and the way that's developing. Uh, the groundworks are just about complete. Actually, I think it's today they're completing. Hoardings will go up next week. The steel work and the piling will start uh, very shortly as well. So that that is on track at the moment to to be ready for uh, late spring ne next year. And we've got lots of events planned for that. Delighted with the way we're going, but more to come from commercial. One of the aspects that's perhaps related to commercial and has been a lot of discussion over it has been media access for the new season. What can you tell us about that? It's been interesting. A lot said about that over the last couple of weeks in particular. Uh, we we've, we sat down a couple of months ago and looked at the way the world is changing. And it's not changing any in any area more so than media. If you look at where we were 20 years ago in media. However, some people don't seem ready for change. And what we're trying to do, and just like, like I'll explain the rationale of what we're trying to do on the media side of things. We've looked at some of the partners we deal with, like Sky, for example, who pay a lot of money for their access to our players, our manager, our intellectual property. We pay a lot of money for that. We have sponsors and partners who pay a lot of money for access to our intellectual property as well. However, the, the mainstream media, if you can call them that, mainly the papers, they have had a good run at it for a number of years where they don't pay anything, they get free access. Although they didn't, in days gone by, that wasn't the case because they used to buy hospitality, they used to buy advertising. But all of that, is, as they've experienced a decline in their industry, and understandably, they've looked to reduce costs. So they, these are areas which they've, they've stopped spending money on. However, they still get access, or they did get access to our manager through pre-match and post-match conferences. And if you assume 50 or 60 games a year, maybe that's 100 to 120 times a year they, they actually get access to, to our manager and our players. And all we're saying is, you know, that, that, you've done well out of that, guys. But actually, we're looking at, we've invested significant sums in our own social media platforms, Rangers TV, and more and more of our supporters are actually accessing, and the wider community, not just Rangers supporters, but the wider community are actually accessing these platforms that we've invested very heavily in. And you can see the growth and the numbers that we've got in those platforms. So what we're saying now to, to the mainstream media is, look, guys, we are, you can still come to the game, you can still report on the, the match, but that access you get to the manager, the access you get to the players, we're looking to actually create a commercial revenue stream from that, and you're going to have to pay for that. Now, it's your choice, it's a totally commercial decision, and your choice if you want to pay for it or not. But we know that, that the information that we put out there will go out through Rangers TV and out through our social media platforms. So we're not falling out with anybody, there's a lot of good journalists in, in, in the world and we can happily coexist, but the world's changing. And my job and the job of my team and James Bisgrove and his team is to maximise the revenues that we bring, to, bring into the club. You know, and I've seen a couple of articles where it's, you know, Rangers hubris and, you know, because they won the league. This would have happened regardless of whether we'd won the league last season. This is the way the world is moving. Talk to other clubs, not just in Scotland, but in England as well. And there are other clubs who are looking at doing this as well. Maybe we've gone a bit more public on it. But this is something that we're going to do. So it's up to the, you know, if the mainstream papers want to get on the bus, great. If they don't, they don't. You know, that's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll deal with that. But as I say, we are very comfortable with the decision we've taken on in that area. Sorry. And we'll, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it develops. A key thread of conversation at this time of year is always transfers both in and out. Great to see some business already been doing for the first team with a, a good number of arrivals already. Yeah, delighted. I mean, I think you see we brought in Jack Simpson, Scott Wright and Namdi, obviously in uh, in January. We've then brought in Fashion and John Lundstrom, who've, uh, Fashion Sakala and John Lundstrom, who've, who've come in in the summer. Uh, I think from the, the snippets we've seen so far in the early pre-season games, you can see that they've added something different, real quality to the squad. So I know that Stephen and the coaching team are delighted uh, with the, 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 the way in which they've settled in so quickly. And I think that's a testament to, to Ross and Stephen and the team and the players, actually, the way they've welcomed these guys into the team. So absolutely delighted with uh, the guys who come in so far. It's, uh, it's not the end of July yet, you know, so there's, there's still a few weeks to go and we'll, we'll see what happens through the rest of the window. One of the things you've kind of, or one of the threads right through the whole interview has been it's all about looking forward. So how do you and your staff continue to drive the club forward this season and beyond? It's about never stopping. 
Uh, Nick, you have to continually looking at what you do next. What can we improve on? What could be done better? We we had a big to-do list when we came in, and you know that to-do list probably a bit shorter now, but it's still fairly lengthy. Uh, lots of areas of the club that we still feel we could be doing things better. Uh, this week, actually, we've you know we've got an offsite meeting to go away, and we're looking at actually updating the strategy plan we've got. We, we update it every six months, and uh, it's a, we're looking forward into the winter period. And where do we want to be? What areas do we want to improve? What structures do we want to change? What infrastructure elements do we need to look at improving? Uh, I mentioned customer service, and that's a, a big part of where we're, we're going to be focused over the next 12 months and improving that side of things. Uh, so it's just continually pushing, looking at what's best practice in the market, looking at other football clubs, looking at other sports clubs, uh, particularly looking at sports in the States. We, we spend a lot of time looking at that. And it's about information. It's about getting information from people in different areas. You know, you, you have to be constantly looking to learn about how other, how other people do things and say, well, actually, is that better or not than what we're doing? And if it's better, how can we implement something like that? So we will be pushing really hard. The exec team that's here is, is all really geared towards pushing and making things constantly better because we can't stop still. We can't get complacent. You know, if we want to go in and get 56 and 57 and 58 and beyond, regularly qualify for Champions League football, we need to keep pushing really hard. And just finally, this is obviously the 150th anniversary season of the, the football club and with Real Madrid friendly at the weekend and there, there's so much planned as you kind of alluded to, it just seems for everyone, staff, players, supporters, a, a fantastic year to be involved with Rangers Football Club. It's something that I, I'm conscious I'm very lucky to, to be sitting here in this job at, at this time. I, it's a privilege to be leading the club through its 150th anniversary. I, it's... John Gregg's interview the other day prior to the El Madrid, Madrid game, he said it's not a club, it's an institution. And it means so much to so many people. And we're very conscious that we are here for a period of time and we will act as custodians, but we need to hand the club across to the next set of custodians in better shape than we, we got it in. And that's, that's a key, one of my key things I try and do every day when, when I'm here. There are so many people get so much from this you know, from, from Rangers. It means so much to them. And this year in particular is, is, is massive for the club. To have done it on the back of winning the league is a great springboard to take it on and, and really push on and make sure we'll, as I said earlier, leave a legacy. You know, New Edmonds now will be the physical legacy, but there's the, the kind of spiritual legacy we want to leave behind. Having Arsenal and Real Madrid here over the course of a week, two teams that mean a lot to a lot of Rangers fans. Arsenal for the historical reasons, Real Madrid, because it just seems to be a lot of Rangers fans have got a connection with Real Madrid. That's been really important. That felt, they always felt like two fantastic teams to actually bring to Ibrox to start the 150 celebrations. So that's just the start. So there's, there's a whole 12 months ahead of us and hopefully all of the fans, everybody gets a chance to participate in some of those events.